Hi everyone. I'm going to do a demonstration of derivations in Logic 2010. So fire up your Logic 2010 and you should see this menu right here and you click derivation and then this window will pop up. Now just like all the other modules you have to start by selecting a question so you go to select and a window will open up that has all the options for you. So I'm going to just do three basic questions today and uh, that will sort of be enough to explore the functionality of Logic 2010. So I'm going to start with point zero 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 three. So you double click it and you get the derivation. Now th what you want to do is the first thing you need to do is you actually have to hit enter and whenever you hit enter it will pop up a new the first line. So Logic 2010 automatically numbers your lines for you. This middle section here is where your symbolization um, sort of sentences go and over here the annotations. Now lo in Logic 2010 it's very automated so in fact you don't actually have to click over here and type stuff out to get the right show line. So I wouldn't have to write show do this. In fact Logic 2010 will automatically do things for you if you just simply um, enter in the proper code. So, I mentioned this in lectures, a good code right off the bat is to say that you are showing the conclusion, which is abbreviated C-O-N-C. And if you hit enter, what happens is Logic 2010 automatically creates the show line of the conclusion and automatically indents for you as well, which is good. At this stage, we're just going to do the derivation. Now, this derivation is very straightforward. I have very limited options, um, but I'm just going to sort of show you some of the sort of key steps. One thing I could do is if I wanted to, I could write in premise 1, and premise 1 just is showing me that I can, I'm allowed to restate any premise I want. So I might as well also state premise 3, and then why am I doing that? Because I want to modus ponens these together. So I have the antecedent of line 3, also known as premise 3, on line 2, and I'm ready to modus ponens. So how do I do that? I type in 3, 2, modus ponens. Hit enter and Logic 2010 automatically does the proper inference to Q. So this is quite nice because it makes sure you don't make any mistakes. Uh, from this, how do I finish it? Well, you might actually think that the answer is over here I have Q, and over here in my second premise I have R arrow not Q, so I might want to try a modus tollens. I obviously can't do this, but I'm going to try it anyway. So for premise 2 modus tollens, and it will say, no form of modus tollens is applicable. I can hit the question mark, and then it gives me an error. So I appear to be trying to use the rule like so, such and such, and then it just gives me a generic error. So how do I fix this error? I delete all this stuff, and I realize what I really need to do is take line 4, and I need to double negate it. And then from here, line 5 with premise 2 does give me the MT successfully. I have not R. What do I do now? Well, when I realize I have not R and I wanted to show not R, I hit 6 space DD for direct derivation, enter, and it just crosses it off in boxes. Now, finally, I hit check, correct derivation, and then I'm ready to submit whenever I want to. I'll save that problem and select a new one. So, now I'm going to do 1.009. Now in this, again, I start by hitting enter, and I want to show a conclusion. So let's say I actually forget what my options are, and I need to type some stuff in, but I can't remember my rules and so on. If I actually right-click the box, it will actually tell me all the sort of things that I can do in this question that Logic 2010 will automatically recognize. So premise, conditional derivation, indirect derivation, direct derivation, assume CD, assume ID, repeat, modus ponens, modus tollens, and double negate. And here are my sort of other sort of codes that I can enter. Um, now, some of these sort of might seem a bit mysterious for now, but we won't worry about it. So if I was confused, I could right click and I'd be like, oh yeah, show conclusion. I click that and it automatically punches it in and starts my next line. Now, I should realize that what I try to show here is a conditional statement. In a conditional, we do a hypothetical derivation. So what we do is I show, to show P arrow Q, I must assume the antecedent and then show the consequent. Well, so that's easy. I can click assume a conditional derivation, which is assume CD, hit enter, and it will generate P for me. And then I could right click and realize that it's show consequent, and then it does it automatically. Now what should I do? Well, when I have Q, I should always just assume ID, so I hit it, and then hit enter, there you go. 
So Logic 2010 will automatically fill things in for you. When in doubt, right click the box and it will tell you what your options are. At this point, I have P and not Q as available lines, and I can quickly see that I can just modus ponens, uh, sorry, modus tollens this. And so I will say line 4, and I can immediately cite premise 1, modus tollens. Uh, so be careful here. If you actually write, um, you know, premise 1 with a space in it, it won't actually, it won't actually work. It'll say, uh, it contains something weird, so you actually have to make sure that uh, you use no space. Um, from here, I will double negate, so line 5, double negate. When I hit double negate, it gives me the option. Do I want to peel away both negations or add two more to get four? I get to pick, I will peel away, and I get that. And now on line 2 and line 6, 2, 6, modus ponens, and I have Q. Um, okay, so I could now write line 7 DD and that would work, but let's say I actually just want to realize I do I can do it here. So I write the DD in. To update a line, you hit Shift Enter. If I just hit Enter, I've done nothing. But if I update the line with Shift Enter, it will fix it. Logic 2010 has a bit of an oddity where if you do it this way, it will actually black out your last line, which should have just been the Q. Uh, this is sort of a weird feature of the program, don't worry about it. On a test, you can do it either way. Okay, so now that I've done that, what do I do to uh, finish my derivation? I have wanted to show P arrow Q, I assume the antecedent, I've shown the consequent, so now I write 3, conditional derivation, enter, and it closes everything. I click check, correct derivation, save, and done. Last question. Um, I will select question 1.031. So again, I hit enter to start, and I will this time just type show conclusion, because I've remembered that's the shortcut. I'll also just type in assume ID, oops, sorry, that's incorrect, assume CD, shift enter to update, and then I will uh, show consequent, and I get that. Now at this point, I should assume ID, so I can type it in, or if I forgot code, I right click, and then I just hit enter. And notice it gives me the option. In an assume ID, one of the options is to add a negation, but the other is to peel it away. So in this case, uh, I just select the one I want, I will peel it away. So now I have PQ. Now, so this is actually one of those um, one of those examples where I actually don't have the ability to do anything. I only have one premise on the board and it's sort of complicated. I have an antecedent that is P arrow Q and a consequent that's negation Q arrow P. So it looks like I actually need to show something. What would be really nice to have is the antecedent of this premise which is P arrow Q. So if I ever want to invoke a show, here's how you do it. Over here I type show and hit enter and then now it generates everything, and now I can enter in manually what I want to show. How do I do that? I right click, and everything will pop up. I want to show P arrow Q, and then that's that. Now, the advantage of doing this is now I can just proceed as normal. I will assume CD, and then I will show the consequent. Oops. Notice I was in the wrong box. So I assume CD, move down here, and I'll show the consequent. Uh, and then on this stage, I can just realize that I have Q. I already have it on line 4. So if I try and write 4 direct derivation, it won't let me. Always remember, when you want to close something with a, with a uh, closing condition, it must be in the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat line 4 so the Q is there. And now I can say 8DD and it closes that. I've shown the Q, now I want to close show P arrow Q, and that's easy, I hit 7 CD, I've shown that, and now P arrow Q is an available line. The point of doing that was I can modus ponens with premise 1, so I hit 5, premise 1, modus ponens. Now I have not Q arrow P. Now I'm actually sort of in the same situation. I have not Q arrow P, and that's great, but it doesn't actually help me get to where I want to go. Uh, so what would be really nice if I actually just had Q arrow P on its own, then I could build a contradiction. So that's what I'm going to do now. 
I'll type show, hit enter. Over here, I'll right click and say Q arrow P and hit enter. Get rid of that box. Over here, I will assume CD. Now I will show consequent. And now I just want to show P. But I already know I have P. It's up here on line 2. So I write 2, repeat, and I could even just say direct derivation right there. Notice it does that strange thing where it gets rid of the box. That's okay. Uh, and now I can say 14 CD to close my conditional derivation. Don't worry if this went a bit quick. I'm just trying to demonstrate how Logic 2010 works. You can just replay this video and follow the moves. Now that I have Q arrow P, notice on line 11 I have not Q arrow P, line 12, Q arrow P. I say line 11, line 12, indirect derivation because those are opposites of each other and notice it closes this. One thing you can do with Logic 2010 is you can actually get it to hide all the little subderivations so it's a little easier to look at. I personally don't love doing that but I can imagine on large proofs that's actually sort of a nice trick. I've shown not Q. Now I look to my most recent show line which Logic 2010 conveniently highlights for me and I know I want to show P arrow not Q. How do I do that? I cite line 3 do a conditional derivation and it will close it and I'm done. I hit check. Everything looks good. Correct derivation. Notice all these extra blank lines at the end. They don't matter. So if you have a ton of blank lines, it's no big deal. Um, if you want to uh, delete them, you can. Alt delete is the quick code or you just uh, right click it and it will give you some options uh, down here. You can hit delete and so on. So. Exploring the other features of Logic 2010 is quite helpful. Uh, if you run into problems, it's typically because you've tried to do a move that's illegal or you've somehow messed up in the presentation of your work. So while Logic 2010 is excellent on derivations in that it doesn't make any mistakes, you just have to make sure you enter everything properly. When in doubt, just click help and you can click all these little question marks for sort of extra uh, notes and advice. Okay, so just remember, I typically work off of the justification annotation line, and if you don't know what to put in, right-click, it will give you all the options. Good luck.